Hi everyone, I'm Joanna from INRIA and I'm going to talk about latest saving via quantum monomers. So first of all, I will introduce some um, notions about latencies, LSF and quantum computing, as then I will explain how our algorithm works and give some results about the complexity. So first of all, a latest is defined uh, that way. So it is a set of all integral linear combinations of a given a basis of vectors. On the front of this, we can define the shortest vector problem, SVP, uh, which is given a latest, we have to find the shortest non-zero uh, vector in this latest. So here in this example, we have the basis P1 on B2 in blue, and um, the the latest vectors are represented uh, by black dots and the, the shortest vector problem asks us to find the shortest vector of the latest unjordered by B1 and B2 uh, which is the uh, vector in red. So why do we want to solve SVP? Uh, basically from a cryptography point of view it is an NP hard problem and it is hard in average and uh, there are several problems with uh, which derive from uh, SVP, such as SIS, LWE, or NTIU. And uh, there are several quantum resistance cryptosystems, or w uh, which are believed to be quantum resistant, uh, which are based on these uh, derived problems. Um, so, from a cryptanalysis point of view, all of these cryptosystems are broken if we can find a reduced basis of the lattice which is used. And uh, the BKZ algorithm finds a reduced basis on using an oracle that solves SVP as a subroutine. So, in a nutshell, the security of these cryptosystems directly relies on the complexity of solving SVP. So, there are several methods to solve SVP. Uh, the two main practicals today are by enumeration and by saving. And uh, today, all of the methods we know uh, to solve SVP run in exponential time. So, in this presentation, I focus on uh, the saving method. And uh, it is a heuristic method that uh, means that uh, we use heuristics and the main of them as, uh, is that uh, the latest vectors act as random vectors. And this implies that vectors of norm atmos R are lying on the border of the sphere of uh, radius R on dimension D. This heuristic has been uh, very dated by experiments, so it is not far from the reality to consider that latest vectors act as random vectors. So, um, this is the algorithm uh, for the sieving. Uh, so the idea is that we begin with a list of n latest vectors, which are of norm R at most a certain R, and we take a parameter gamma strictly inferior to one. On on the output, the algorithm um, will return a list with n with the same n as before, with n latest vectors of norm at most gamma R. So the output vectors are shorter than the vectors in the input. And uh, to do this, uh, we can simply check each pair of vectors in the list. So, and we check if um, uh, the norm of the difference is inferior to gamma r. If it is the case, we add uh, v minus w, so the difference, to the output list. Here we see um, the shear of dimension d on radius r. We have our, um, our vectors all over the sphere, and uh, we see that if we have uh, v and w latest vectors, uh, then v minus w is a combination of uh, two latest vectors, so it is also a latest vector. And if we have v and w which are close at angle, uh, then v minus w can be shorter than v or w. On the limit angle, uh, so that is true. Uh, is when we have v on w which uh, forms an angle of p over 3. So if, um, if, they, are, uh, if they have a um, bigger angle, uh, then they will not reduce. Um, so to solve SVP using uh, this, uh, uh, this algorithm, 
uh, we begin with a lattice, so it is um, defined by a, a basis of vectors. Uh, on, on the output, we want to have the shortest vector of the lattice. Um, it is a probabilistic uh, algorithm, so it will probably return uh, the shortest vector. Um, to do this, uh, the first step is to generate a list of n lattice vectors, uh, for example, by Plans algorithm. Um, here, the value of n is the uh, smallest value so such that we have at least uh, one vector uh, which reduces with another vector in the list of n vectors. So it is the smallest value such that we can have n, um, n vectors in input and n vectors in output. Uh, so we have our list. Uh, while the list does not contain a short vector, then we apply a stiff step on it uh, with a parameter gamma very close to 1. Uh, then we return the shortest vector we have found with this method. We see that at the beginning, uh, when we have just uh, generated the list L, uh, the norm of the vectors are at, at most R for certain R, which is the maximum of the norm of uh, the vectors. So after the first iteration in the while loop, uh, the norm of the vector are at most gamma R. After the second iteration, we, uh, we um, win uh, again a factor gamma, so it is gamma square R. And after only a polynomial time uh, in D, the dimension of the reality, uh, we we have a gamma uh, power polynomial of d uh, times r, so it is exponentially lower than the first r we had. So we can expect that there is a short vector in the sphere of um, this radius. So the complexity of this algorithm is in n square because we have uh, n square pairs in the list of size uh, l uh, in size n uh, to check. So it is this complexity. And uh, for the space complexity, it is uh, just n because we have to store the n vectors of the list. So this algorithm can be uh, improved by using a filtering. So the idea is that we only want to check pairs of closed vectors uh, because all of the vectors which are of more than previous three um, they are not interesting us because uh, they, are, they are not reducing each other. So uh, to do this, we use filters. So a filter is characterized by a center S, which is basically a vector over the sphere, and uh, an angle alpha. So here we have uh, the sphere. Um, we have a filter of center S and angle alpha. And uh, here, v, if, uh, v is uh, of angle at most alpha with s, so we can say that v is in the filter of um, center s and the angle alpha, and the value is outside this filter. So to improve uh, the, the sieve using this, uh, the first step is to generate filters all over the sphere, and to do this, uh, we consider a code and we, we consider that uh, the code words are the centers of the filters. Uh, then we add each vector to its nearest filters of angle at most alpha with it. So to do this, uh, we use the um, list decoding algorithm, which is provided by the code structure. And then uh, we search uh, for reducing pairs. So for each vector, we search reducing one within its vector. Uh, so it is instead of uh, checking in the whole list, we only check in the filters. So uh, for this search step, uh, we can do it classically by checking each vector one by one, or we can do it uh, conformally by a group of search. Um, so about the complexity, uh, for the original sieve, it was a TS, and we see that uh, using LSF, it reduces a lot the time exponents. So our goal was to reduce again this, um, this time exponents. So now for the quantum computing part, um, one of the most uh, famous algor quantum algorithm is Grover's algorithm. 
So the idea is that we have uh, n data on the, a check function uh, that uh, takes an, an x uh, in, uh, uh, in input and return uh, 0 or 1. And uh, the output of a Gravel's algorithm is to return an x so that we have f of, f of x, which value 1. So Gravel's um, does this calculation in the square root of n steps, uh, where in a classic model we are we have to uh, take to take uh, n steps uh, until we find the correct answer. Another very very useful algorithm, uh, quantum Lee, is the uh, the quantum random work. So it takes in in its uh, input a graph j on the function uh, f or l before. Um, and we can choose f so that we have a f of a vertex value in one uh, as we want, and uh, we call it a mark vertex. And uh, the quantum random work returns a mark vertex. Um, so I will explain uh, further this with an example uh, to be more concrete. So uh, now our algorithm is uh, basically a sieve step. So we begin with n lattice vectors of norm at most a certain r, and uh, we uh, we return um, a list uh, of the same number of lattice vectors, but they are shorter. Uh, the main idea was to take uh, the previous uh, best um, a quantum algorithm and to replace uh, the Grover such step by a quantum random work. So, for the first step, uh, we sample a code on the, the associate uh, alpha filters, so there are filters of um, angle alpha, uh, and then we insert each list vector in its unique nearest alpha filter. So, basically, it is um, separate, uh, this step separates the sphere into uh, large areas of um, angle alpha, uh, and we can choose, uh, with uh, this parameter c, we can choose the number of uh, vectors there are in each alpha area, and uh, we will optimize later the, uh, the parameter c. So here uh, we have, uh, again, our sphere of um, dimension d. Uh, we have a filter of uh, center s, and uh, as we we consider that uh, latest vectors act as uh, random vectors. Uh, in fact, they are lying on the border of the, uh, of the filter. So they are fungal alpha with the center S. So we can consider that these vectors are uh, d-dimensional um, uh, vectors. So in fact, if we uh, take the difference between two of these vectors, uh, it is the same I have considering the residual vectors uh, on the d minus one dimensional sphere, and uh, we can have a, um, an equivalence between the angle we are searching. So we want to have reduced pairs on the d dimensional sphere. Uh, so pairs of vectors which are of angle at most p over three, and uh, the corresponding angle uh, between two res residual vectors. Um, is a, a certain theta star alpha, which only depends on alpha. So now, um, for the steps two, uh, we have our um, uh, our areas of angle alpha, and uh, for each of uh, these areas, uh, we check uh, in in the corresponding filter uh, for for uh, um, for finding all the, of the solution in this area. So to do this, uh, we start by constructing the a vertex. So to um, so we choose randomly n power c one. Uh, it is another parameter. Uh, we we choose uh, n power c one vectors from this current alpha filter. Uh, then we sample a second uh, layer of filtering. So there are the beta filters of angle beta, and uh, we insert each vertex vector in its nearest beta filter. Uh, and then we perform uh, quantum random works uh, in order to find all of the um, reducing pairs in this uh, alpha filter. Um, so the graph we are using is uh, the Johnson graph. So um, uh, Johnson graph uh, here for parameter n power c and n power c1. Um, it is 
constructing uh, that way. So we have uh, for the vertex, each vertex is a set of n power c1 uh, vectors which are chosen from the n power c vectors of the current alpha filter. On the, uh, we consider there is, an, uh, there is an edge between two vertexes uh, if only if they differ by exactly one vector. So to see uh, for a more um, for a simpler example, uh, here we have the Johnson graph of parameter five on two. So we have uh, five possible elements, and uh, each vertex is a set of two elements um, among these fives. And uh, we see that there are, um, there is an edge between uh, two vectors if uh, there is an edge between two vertex if and only if they differ by exactly one element. Uh, so for the control model work, we have our graph, which is uh, well defined. And uh, here uh, we say that a vertex is mapped if and only if um, it contains a pair of angles at most theta star alpha. So if there are if uh, there are residual vectors, which are um, which are the residual vectors of the d-dimensional vector, uh, which are reducing. And uh, the control model work, we return uh, such a um, mark vertex. So now to explain uh, how it is run, control model work works. Uh, here we have the graph, uh, which is a uh, way um, simplified. And here we have the current vertex we are working in. So at the beginning, we have our n power c1 uh, vectors. Um, they are, um, so they are residual vectors, and uh, we consider that they are lying on a sphere of the d minus 1 dimension. Uh, then we uh, we generate the filters, the beta filters, and uh, we add each vector in its nearest filters. And now we begin the, uh, the work. So on the graph we are here, uh, by adding this vector from the current alpha filter, so venue, uh, we compute its, um, its nearest filters. And then we check in its uh, nearest filters if there is uh, a vector which um, which reduces with venue. If it is the case, we win and we return the result. And uh, if uh, we don't find a reducing pair, uh, then we pass to the next vertex. So to do this, uh, we delete one vector randomly and uh, we add another venue from the current alpha filter. And we do this again and again until we find a close uh, vector to venue. So um, by uh, taking the difference of uh, these two vectors, we find a shorter vector. So here, uh, on this scheme, I explained for classic random work by choosing a randomly a vector to be deleted and a vector to be added. Uh, in fact, uh, for the control random work, the difference is that uh, we do not choose randomly uh, because uh, we do a control superposition of all the possible um, uh, neighbor vertices. So for the complexity of one control model work, uh, we need to have these uh, five values. Uh, so for the setup uh, S, it is a cost uh, to construct the first vertex uh, and to compute the beta filters for each of each vectors. Uh, then we have uh, the update costs, so we construct the quantum superposition of all of the neighbors of uh, the current vertex, and uh, um, we do during this step uh, the search of uh, uh, reducing vectors of venue uh, within its beta filters. Uh, by doing this step uh, during the update step, in fact, uh, the check step. Uh, is uh, immediate. It is in uh, constant time because it is already done uh, before. Uh, then we also need uh, epsilon, the probability for a vertex to be mapped. So for a vertex to contain uh, two vectors which, which are reducing. And finally, delta, which is the spectral gap of the graph. So the overall complexity of um, a quantum random work is uh, this uh, formula. So 
uh, the the only difference with the quantum uh, between a quantum random work and the classical random work uh, are the square roots over epsilon and delta. Uh, so to summarize uh, our algorithm, uh, we have a step one which separates uh, the sphere into uh, large areas of angle alpha. And then uh, during the second step, we are searching for all of the solutions uh, inside of each alpha, uh, alpha area. So, in fact, um, doing this, we are missing all of the solutions, for example, where we have a reducing pair V and W, and uh, V is in an alpha area, and the W is in another alpha area. So, we have to uh, run this step again and again until we get the n reduced vectors by changing the, the alpha areas, by uh, changing the, the filters. So the complexity of this uh, algorithm is, uh, in fact, uh, we are doing n quantum order work, so the overall complexity it is 1. And um, in fact, the values of s, epsilon, delta, and u are only depending on the three parameters we, we uh, can choose as we want. So they are uh, c, such that we have c powers, uh, n power c vectors per alpha filter. Uh, we have n power c1 vectors per vertex in the graph, and then uh, n power c2 vectors per beta filter. So, after a numerical optimization, we get these uh, three um, optimized parameters that gives um, a solution of SVP in dimension d uh, in time uh, 2 power 0.2570 uh, uh, d. Um, and uh, we also have uh, computed the, um, the space complexities. So we have um, these are three different uh, types of memory. So for the QRAM on quantum memory, uh, it is quite practical because uh, it is um, because uh, we see that the space exponents are not uh, as uh, high as uh, for the classical under the time. Uh, for other for other saving algorithm, it is much of the same um, number of order, um, but it, it requires a model that uh, allows QRAM on quantum memory. Um, so finally, we have uh, trade-offs. So in fact, uh, if we have uh, as much quantum memory as we want, uh, we can um, perform the the algorithm with uh, the optimal time, uh, but if we do not have, um, uh, if we have limited quantum memory, uh, we can still uh, run the algorithm uh, with uh, less quantum memory, and uh, by choosing uh, the by choosing the right parameters, uh, we get a higher time, but we can still um, we can still get a solution. Um, so here it is the same for QRAM uh, limitation. So we see that it is very close uh, to to a fine curves. Uh, so to do a synthesis uh, of uh, this uh, for the trade-offs, uh, in fact, if we choose uh, the best um, parameter for having uh, zero QRAM and zero quantum memory, uh, we recover the um, uh, the, com the time complexity of the actual best classical algorithm, so the SVP by sieving. Uh, th then, if we had some uh, QRAM, uh, we recover here the uh, complexity of the previous best quantum algorithm. And uh, here we add uh, some QRAM on quantum memory, and we have uh, our optimal time. Um, so, to conclude, uh, in fact, uh, we uh, we show with this work that the time to break a crypto system, uh, in fact, it was uh, lower than we seen before. And uh, concretely, that means that uh, before, um, if one claimed about uh, having uh, crypto systems with 128 bits of security, uh, in fact, there are four bits of security uh, which are lost. And uh, it is uh, uh, requires a fix with a slight increase of the parameter. So thank you very much for your attention.